What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, we are going to talk about the material thermal properties. Okay? So we're going to specify conceptual types and schematic types. And then we are going to assign material thermal properties. Okay? So for us to be able to access the material thermal properties, so I'm going to select here energy settings from the analyze tab. So let's click energy settings. Uh, move the slider down, advance other options, just click edit. Okay, just move the slider down here and then here's your material thermal properties. So Revit offers three ways to specify material thermal properties of building elements for energy analysis. So we have the conceptual types, which is the default. Okay, so this is the default. And then the next one is schematic types. So if this is enabled, it will override the conceptual types. Okay, the other one is detailed elements. So if this is enabled and if the material thermal properties are specified for building elements, it will override both the conceptual type and schematic type. Okay, so let's uh, play around with the options here. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to click edit for my conceptual types. So let's see what's uh, uh, what are the options here. So let's click that one. So you can see here for each row, a construction option can be selected from the drop down. So if you click the drop down here, so you can see different options, right? Okay, so this is useful to your engineer, to the designer. Okay, if they're going to use Revit for energy analysis, they can... Uh, modify the material thermal properties here. So you have the conceptual types, which is the default uh, settings. So by default, the conceptual types will be used. Okay, so let me cancel this one. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to check out what is the schematic type. So let's click the more button here. Okay, so here on our schematic types dialog, so as you can see, you have an override option here. So override can be selected for a uh, category. Okay, so you can again click that one if you want to override or select the analytic construction, for example, for your roof, exterior walls, interior walls, etc., etc. Okay. Now, the other option here is, okay, so we have conceptual types, schematic types, so we have uh, detailed elements. It will override the other types and use the thermal properties for the materials used in the model, okay, if you tick that one out. Now, if you want to review the material thermal properties, okay, you can go here. Let me just cancel this one or let's say I'll just check this one. I'm going to use detailed elements, material thermal properties. I'm going to select here OK. And then after that, I'll just select here OK. So to review the material thermal properties, I'm going to select here the Manage tab. And then after that, you see there's a settings here. So you can see here materials. So you can click the materials and then it will open up the materials browser, which is uh, this one. Okay, so in our material editor, so you can uh, you can switch to the thermal uh, tab, which is this one. Okay, so you click the thermal tab. Okay, so these are the settings that you will be using if you use your detailed elements uh, material thermal properties. Okay, so if you tick that one, you can go to the thermal and then you can modify here. Okay, so the thermal asset parameters are these properties here. So if the thermal tab it does not appear, then a thermal asset has not been added to the material. Okay, right? So just remember that. So if the thermal tab is not here, so meaning to say the material or the thermal asset has not been added to the material. Okay, so that's it for this simple exercise. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.